I don't think that it can be overstated just how badly Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the Liberal Party did in the Durham by-election last night. They knew that this race was going to be a litmus test, as it rightfully should be, and they threw everything at the wall for it. Trudeau and his cabinet showed up to stump for the Liberal candidate Robert Rock, who previously applied to be the Conservative candidate in the riding, which is a bad sign for your electoral chances when your own candidate only wanted you as his second choice. But they also threw tons of money at this race, threw all of their volunteers into the riding, and they still underperformed. It turns out when the Conservatives run a real Conservative as their candidate, Jamil Giovanni in this case, they do really well. Jamil Giovanni got 57.4% of the vote, which is actually an 11% vote share improvement over Aaron O'Toole in 2021, despite the fact that Aaron O'Toole was the leader of the party, but it just goes to show that nobody liked Aaron O'Toole because he was effectively just a liberal, light, conservative representative. The liberals only got 22.5% of the vote. The NDP got 10.4, which is also embarrassing for them. And the PPC should really think about packing it in because they only got 4.4% of the vote in a by-election. I thought the PPC was supposed to be good in by-elections because their base is super, super, like, you know, hardcore and they'll show up to any election. They didn't. You guys underperformed your 2021 numbers and you even ran the same candidate you did last time. So in theory, you should have good name recognition in the area. It didn't work out because people just don't want the PPC, simple as. But there's a lot of liberal activists and other leftists out there trying to downplay the Conservative Party victory, even though their margin of victory jumped from just 16% in this riding under O'Toole all the way up to 36%. They're saying, well, the liberals haven't won this riding since 2000, so it doesn't matter. This guy, David Moscope, uh, who is a liberal journalist. When I say liberal, I just mean left-wing. I actually believe he's a socialist. He's trying to point out, like, well, the conservatives have been winning this riding since 2004 in every federal election and by-election. Okay, what's your point? The conservatives improved their margin of victory despite all of the resources that the liberals had jammed into this riding. Any riding can be a litmus test. If we had a by-election suddenly in University Rosedale, where Christia Freeland is the MP, and she lost 7%, of the vote that she had last time, that would be telling. Just as if you went to a hardcore conservative riding and that person improves on their vote or it falls backwards, that would be telling for the rest of the country. Any election can be a litmus test, nationally speaking, unless there are very, very specific factors at play on the ground that are, you know, suppressing one party's vote or another. This whole election, this by-election, is proving that people just don't show up for the liberals. They tried their hardest and people just don't show up. There is an apathy within the liberal base. And before anyone comes to me and says, well, voter turnout was low. Okay, what's your point? A 28% voter turnout is enough for me to assume that the rest of the riding would have pretty much voted the exact same way. But you get people like this GT Lem guy who's a big liberal shill saying, this is how low the voter turnout was in Durham. More people voted for the past MP Aaron O'Toole in 2021 than all the candidates combined in 2024. Okay, what's your point? Yeah, not as many people know there's an election going on and people don't take by-elections as seriously, but the cross-section of voters who show up and vote in a by-election is pretty much going to be what the uh, cross-section is going to look like in a general election. It's just that less people show up because, you know, more apathetic voters don't feel like this one's even really worth, you know, voting in. And a lot of liberals probably showed up because they knew their guy wasn't going to win. It's a political myth. And this is actually something that the PPC does a lot. That's very obnoxious. They act as if, well, if we could only get out the people who didn't vote, then the results would have been, like, been different. Would they have? 28% of voter turnout is a pretty good sample size of what everyone in the the area would have probably generally voted like. Uh, there's not this secret voter who, if you just activate them to show up, they're going to vote for whatever your brand of politics is. And this is what the liberals and the PPC are doing, acting like, well, if the other 72% of people showed up, it would have been different. No, it would have been. How do you know they're going to vote for you? They didn't vote for you. The best sign they were not going to vote for you is the fact they did not show up and vote for you. The, the, the other 72% would have probably broken down the exact same way. Uh, here's a, I, I believe this is actually a PPC guy on Twitter. And he said, the PPC didn't underperform at all. Vote splitting is a myth. Well, because he's responding to me saying the PPC did it really badly in this by-election. 
I never said anything about vote splitting. I'm not even mad at the PPC for, for vote splitting. I actually do believe vote splitting is a little bit of a myth. Some races it does exist, but for the most part, people vote for the party that they want. And the PPC underperformed. The PPC got only 4.4% of the vote. Patricia Collin, when she ran in 21, got about 5.4%, 5.5%. So she's lost 1.1% from what she had last time, which you could say, well, that's not that different from what she had in 21. Guys, it's a by-election, and supposedly the PPC has the most dedicated hardcore base. What this shows is, is that the 2021 result for the PPC was a mirage. And I think there was a good reason to vote for the PPC in 21, because Aaron O'Toole was awful. I'm in a safe conservative seat. I voted PPC in 21 to register my displeasure with the lack of conservatism coming out of the conservative party under Aaron O'Toole. Things are much better under Pierre Polyev, and that's why a lot of people are not voting PPC anymore. All of the by-elections since the 21 election shows the PPC losing votes. Even when Bernier wrote, ran in Portage Lisgar as their candidate there in the their best riding, he lost a the uh, he lost votes compared to what they had in the previous election in terms of vote share. I don't I don't expect anyone to have the same amount of raw votes in a by-election that they do in a general election. But that's sad. Just almost as sad as Justin Trudeau and the Liberals underperforming. And this is what the poll that just got released today by Nanos Research shows. The Conservatives now federally have a 20% lead over the Liberals, 43 to 23, with the NDP at 21, almost tied with the Liberals. This by-election shows that this is like realistic numbers, that what these polls are showing are probably very close to what reality is. I even just looked at the Durham 338 projections, them sort of determining who's probably going to win this race. They actually, they actually like Jamil Giovanni overperformed the 338 projections by 2%. That's pretty good considering 338 was really hawkish for him to cross over 50% of the vote. And they said 55 and he ended up with 57.4. Very, very good results. The liberals just frankly do not connect with people anymore. They're, they are running on a 2021-2019 platform, despite all of the election, the sort of election issues that they had made promises about. All of those issues in practice have gotten worse. And so the liberals can't show up and say, well, we have modern solutions for modern problems and that we are the fresh, new, progressive party that you should vote for. That might have worked in 2015. Doesn't work when you've been in power for nine years and been consistently screwing things up. I'm not sure why they need to be told this, because it should be true on its face. Huh. Anyways, that should be it for me today, guys. I just want to quickly plug the fact that I, Wyatt Claypool, am running for the Calgary Signal Hill Conservative Party nomination to replace Mr. Ron Liepert since he's not running again. If you live in these general areas of the riding, uh, you can see it on, uh, you can go online and go check out what the general area of the riding looks like, but bonus is being cut out after April, and this is what uh, that map is showing. If you live in this riding, buy a membership to vote for me. Go check out my website in the description below, wyattclaypool.com. And if you do not live in the riding, but you still want to support the campaign, you can donate through an e-transfer on the website. There is a how there is a donation link on the website, and it will show what you have to do to e-transfer money and make sure it's legal with Elections Canada. It's just providing extra information so they know who's donating. And if you don't want to do that, you can also donate to the TNT Legal Fund. We have a ridiculous billionaire developer suing us for defamation, uh, despite the fact that we have said nothing incorrect about him. And also our guest writer, when they mentioned him in an article, pretty much just used an old Globe and Mail article, which was a massive investigation of him. So we never even reported anything really new about him, but he's still trying to go after us. So any money you can contribute to that legal fund really helps us out. Our legal costs have been more than $26,000 so far. So even $20 helps lighten the load. Uh, but other than that, also, if you happen to know people in my riding of Calgary Signal Hill, make them buy a membership. If you live in Calgary, I guarantee you know like one or two households in this area. So other than that, I will see you guys later.